Today I have a three axis gimbal which I received from Banggood and there you can see the description on the box. This is a three axis gimbal using the Storm 32 uh, gimbal control board and uh, yeah it, it arrived a little smashed <laughs> But uh, let's open it and see if everything inside is okay. Okay. First thing, seems to be a little instruction sheet. But I will be going through the steps as I set this up. I'm planning to use this on my bigger hexacopter, so yeah. It weighs 180 grams. And uh, this is the board layout. The pins we will be using, or that I will be using, is going to be ground. Obviously your, 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 connect, your connector does need ground. And RC0 for pitch. And I might uh, set up roll as well just to make sure I've got a, a level. I'm not that much interested in yaw. Uh, the only reason I've got a three axis gimbal is so that it can stabilize yaw for me uh, as I use the quadcopter or hexacopter in my case for my yaw control. Okay, the box is empty, put that one side. And all right, we've got a little camera strap, a little bag of goodies for mounting, and a battery connector, a little JST connector, which is handy. All right, put that all one side. And all right, there's the vib anti vibration plate. These seem fairly stiff. And uh, they seem to be a pretty good quality. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead, set her up, connect it up, get a camera on, and see how it works. Okay, um, I have my uh, hexacopter set up here. And uh, what I've already done is I've removed the, the old two axis gimbal that was mounted on that side. This is a four cell system. It was originally a three cell system, but that is. Uh, wasn't enough for me, so I upgraded to a four cell system. Uh, there's a FPV transmitter attached here, and the little cable. Uh, this is set up for a Xiaomi Yi camera on which this thing is actually being recorded. Um, I am using 12 volt to power the FPV transmitter, as well as this spare line is now for the gimbal, which will be the new gimbal. The, I've got a um, uh, a 12 volt UBEC installed there for that purpose. The battery is already inserted in here. Um, so the next step is going to be for me to set up and mount my gimbal there. But before I go ahead and do that, do bear in mind that this setup I am setting up for a Radiolink AT10 transmitter, which I have here. And the channels will be received on a R10D receiver on this side. Yeah, you can see how I have connected my APM to the R10D receiver. Now I have the first six channels attached there that are only using the signal wires. So it's one through six and then one through six on the receiver here. Yeah. Because power, I am now drawing from my channel 10 on this side. And the additional channels on that side, which will be now open, I am going to be using channel 6 and channel 7 for control of the gimbal. Okay, so this line coming down here is purely for power. Okay. And that is how I have connected up. Now I will show you, once we get there, um, how I connected up here. But it is very simple. I'm only going to be using ground, which is 
right on the other side of the receiver and the top wire which is a signal wire I only need one ground wire to the gimbal and I will be using these two to uh, uh, set up the gimbal control okay our next step is going to be simply getting our gimbal just mounted here now to keep things simple and to keep it as close to the body here now in my case just for interest sake I don't want to lower this too much which also if you lower it a lot then uh, you have uh, chances of ground strike etc now I had some of these mounts which actually come through here and uh, the problem I have with them is it lowers it to about here so if you land in long grass etc then you have very little space there and anything can stick up damage and this board is open so there's <laughs> there's always some damage that occurs and my previous two access gimbal did actually suffer a little bit of damage I'm just going to show you here it is but uh, um, it's not a bad gimbal it's one of those uh, cheapy gim gimbals but uh, it works the only reason I am replacing it now with the three axis gimbal is purely because three axis is that additional axis of your which you either can decide to uh, control in my case I'm not going to control it I just want that additional stabilization so uh, yeah I'm upgrading to a three axis uh, gimbal but anyway let me quickly get that mounted and the way I'm going to mount it is I'm going to first plug all of this in and then I am going to put cable ties through here cable ties are quite a bit stronger than one would think <laughs> and uh, the previous gimbal was mounted on here using cable ties and it was absolutely perfect and you actually get that additional bit of height which I want right I'm not going to bore you with how I'm connecting that I'm just going to plug this all in and um, get it the cable tied on and once it's cable tied on I'm going to be back with you guys to show you how I connect up these wires and cable uh, uh, cable it to the receiver so that I get all the control that I need I've now mounted the the gimbal using cable ties here uh, if you can see them now why cable ties well cable ties are surprisingly strong and um, if you want to mount it in a different way by all means but yeah you can see there's a, quite a bit of clearance now and I like that I've gone ahead and I have uh, connected the wires um, from this side to this side from left to right it's I've got a black a brown and a yellow wire colors don't really matter I just chosen the black wire is going to be my ground referring back to our little sheet that came with this thing let me just show you that we are interested in that part so it's ground RC0 and RC1 with ground being uh, the black RC0 is the pitch and RC1 is the roll in my case brown is going to be my pitch and yellow is going to be the roll that's just if uh, the uh, gimbal is not quite level I can level it out as much as I need uh, for that purpose right now to get this connected up I'm going to take the black wire and let me just turn it a little, a little this way uh, I don't want to take out my receiver from here because it's seated actually pretty well there and I don't want to fiddle with anything but this at the back of the, the receiver the channel right to the bottom is ground and you just get it in there that's the black connector that's the ground the next one uh, brown is connected to RC zero here which is our pitch control now I've got the pitch control set up on channel 7 so I'm connecting to that to channel 7 on this side and yellow will go below that on channel 8 right got that connected now I do already have a little camera set up on here but it's a cheap little clone camera but it, its weight is approximately the same as is Yami Yi it's just because your gimbal is not probably going to work um, if you don't have any weight onto it so I've just put that on there just so I can 
have something with weight. Now I'm going to connect the power cord, which is a little on the short side, but um, I think I'm actually going to, let's see if we can feed it through the top of this uh, gimbal plate. Uh, right, I'll fed it through the top of the gimbal plate, which just gives it a slight bit more length. Um, confirming polarity on this side and connecting it up. Right, now, I do have propellers uh, connected, but uh, I'm not going to be arming anything. Please be very careful. Normally, you would do this without propellers, but don't do as I do. Do as I say. Remove your props. Okay, I'm going to be connecting power. Now, it must be noted that this gimbal does take a little while, approximately 30 seconds, to initialize and start stabilizing. The initialization process does take a couple of uh, seconds, approximately 30 seconds, and it will beep once it's done. Uh, during that period, you should just leave it and not do anything. And there we go. Right, now just to demonstrate to you, I'm going to bring in my radio, my transmitter, and I've set a pitch control on this side. So, that's going to control the pitch. So it's up, and this will be down. Okay. And should it not be centered on the roll axis, I can tune it there. Now the little beep that it gives me is when that switch is centered. And there you go, guys. It is as simple as that. The next thing I just want to show you is how I have set up the um, channels on the auxiliaries on the AT10 controller. The next thing I want to show you is how to set up those channels on your AT10 radio link controller or transmitter so that uh, you can get those channels to work the way I've got mine. And all you do is switch on mode button and then you go down to auxiliary channels there select that and I have set up channel 7 for the variable E and channel 8 variable C that's your variable controller C which I will be using for my roll axis and E is this side for the pitch control and that is pretty much that so you just go down there and select it as you need and once you've done that, end, end, and you are set. And that is pretty much that. If you have any other problems um, understanding that, please uh, leave a comment in the description. I'll try and assist you where I can. All right, guys, that is it. Next step is a flight test. But the flight test will be in the next video. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe and uh, leave comments below and let me know if you have any questions on trying to set up the same uh, gimbal. Please, uh, I cannot help with other transmitters, but uh, for the radio link and for my setup, if your setup is similar to mine, please, by any means, I will try to assist you where I can. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please like. See you later.